move ahead with the demonstration. First, it's important to understand that in order to position a case on the map, we need to know the case's coordinates. But how do the coordinates get into DHIS2 in the first place? Let's open up the Capture app to see. Select a health facility level organization unit and then the Malaria Case Management Program. Let's create a new event to show how the coordinates are captured. Click on the map marker next to Coordinate to open the Capture Coordinate interface. To enter a coordinate, find the location on a map and click on it. A blue map marker now appears. For this event program, the coordinate field represents the location of the case where it is believed they contracted malaria from. Click on Set Coordinates so these coordinates can be entered for the event. These coordinates are saved along with the other data element entries when you save the event. Note that there are two coordinates associated with the event. The assumed location of the case where they contracted malaria from and the organization unit that the event is being registered in. Now that we have seen how coordinates are captured in the Capture app, Let's see how they can be visualized in the Maps app. We will start off by reviewing an existing map to understand the interface and options available. Go to the Dashboard app by clicking on the Dashboard app in the Apps menu. Find a particular map of interest in a dashboard and click on the action ellipses to the right of the map's title. Choose the option Open in Maps app. This will load the particular map in the application when it opens. Now that we are in the app, Let's review the interface. As was the case with the event reports and event visualizer applications, the criteria selection column is at the left of the application. This is where we specify the layers of our map and choose the base map. For the base map, this map is using Bing Road. Throughout the demonstration, we will be using the Bing Road base map, but feel free to test the others as you work through the activities. Above the base map options, we have different layers. This map has one layer. The layer tells us some useful information about what it is showing. Here, we can see that the layer is showing us data from the Malaria Case Management Program for 2019. We can also see that it is filtering out malaria cases where the sex is male and the condition of patient is severe. The action ellipses at the bottom right of the layer box allows us to download the data, edit the layer, or remove the layer. The pencil in the bottom left of the layer box allows us to go straight to the layer to edit it. It's here that we can edit the data, period, organization unit, filter, and style of the map layer. Let's edit the organization units to show only events in Animal Region. Click on the Org Units tab. 
deselect training land, and then select Animal Region. Then click Update Layer. We can now see that only events that happened in Animal Region appear in the map. To add a layer, click on the plus layer button in the top left corner of the app. As you learned in the DHIS2 Fundamentals course, maps can have multiple layers. There are many different options for the layers to add to your map. Let's add a boundary layer. This will allow us to view boundaries for training land and regions within training land. Ensure training land is selected in the organization unit hierarchy, and then select the level as region. Then click Add Layer. Now we can see that the two regions in training land have been outlined in the map. The two other options I want to point out are the File and Download buttons at the top of the map. Under the File button, you are able to create a new map, open an existing map, save or save as, rename, translate, share, get a link, and delete the map. Under the Download button, you are able to download the map as an image. Let's pause here so you can complete the associated activities to familiarize yourself with the Maps app interface.